Hey, hi everybody, welcome back. This is Chantel with Ghana Style. I wanted to talk to you today um, about seven streams of income. So that's my topic for today. If you are not familiar with me, I am uh, the owner of a private um, seamstress business where I make clothes and import clothes from um, with African fabric are from the country of Ghana. And I uh, have started in a few different business ventures and is all in the hopes of getting to the seven strings of income that we're all looking for. <laughs> so uh, I would love to tell you about some of the ones that I have and some of the ones that I'm working on and uh, give you kind of a little bit of a background. Of, of those and how I'm going to get to the, the type of money I want to make. Okay, thank you for visiting and let's, let's get started. First stream of income that I have um, is Etsy. So about four years ago, it has been four years. Oh my God, I'm almost there, yeah. Four years, I started an online store um, with Etsy, and I have to say, for the most part, it's been pretty positive. And so, um, like I said, I make clothes, and what I do is when I make something, I put, I try to do a nice photo shoot, and I put up the pictures on Etsy and do some price comparisons, and try to make sure the price is something that I'm comfortable with charging. My prices are not the highest because I don't consider myself a fashion designer because I taught myself how to sew. And I, I'm somewhat of a novice. I can't say that I'm an expert, but Etsy is the perfect place for that. And so I handmade one of a kind type items. Etsy is the place to be. So in the first year, I sold dashikis. Dashikis were really popular, really, really popular the first year. So um, I want to say I made, um, I guess about 80% of my sales were just dashikis, all colors, all sizes. And then from there, I expanded to things I actually would sew, so skirts, that type of thing. And, and it's, it's doing well. Four years later, I'm still here. I'm still at it. And actually, it's expanded a lot. We have a lot of um, custom-made customers. Um, so that was the first, first one, Etsy. So if you are interested in Etsy and if you haven't had a chance to set up your own shop on Etsy, um, feel free to ask questions, leave some comments, and tell me what you want to know about being on Etsy. And maybe I'll do a video on that. The second one, um, second stream of income, is I have actually decided, gotten back into the um, job industry. And I have to say, I didn't really see myself going down that path. I've been self-employed for the whole four years. Um, but prior to that four years, I did have a career in finance. And, and eventually it just made more sense to be at home. To be at home with my kids, and um, my phone just started ringing last year. Was I interested in going back to work? And I said, hmm, paychecks are nice. <laughs> paychecks are nice. <laughs> paychecks are nice, okay? So, uh, yeah, I am interested. I just had to find a way to balance the two. So I still run my business. And because we're in COVID, the universe aligned for me to be able to work from my office, work from home. For most people, work for office for me. So I think that worked out perfect. So I am now back employed in the financial industry. So I have two streams of income. So I have my business where I have my online shop. And now I also have a nine to five where I get a check in the financial industry. Um, number three 
would be uh, my my direct business to consumer B to C business. So, um, of course, you can't always find all your customers online. You will find customers in your circle of friends, uh, your extended family on Facebook, uh, community people who are uh, that are really into African culture. Those are my direct to customer clients, and I don't get them off the Etsy site at all because Etsy is a fee for everything that comes to them. And so that I don't I use the processing for my payments will either be cash or PayPal or a negative fee, but it's nowhere near as high as Etsy. And so uh, even Cash App, Cash App is our friend these days because I can get my deposits up front from my customers. And then that tells me that they're serious about their orders. They're going to go pick them up, you know. So that's my third stream of income. So I, it's the same business. It's just one income source is from Etsy, from the online marketplace. And the other income source is from direct to customer sales. So it's a whole different marketing. So I consider it a different income stream. And then there's also a different timeline in place for those customers that are requesting something custom made for me and I get to measure them and fit them and that type of thing. So moving on, my fourth stream of income is actually right here. It's right here on YouTube. So I have had a YouTube channel for a while. It's still growing, but as it grows, it will become a source of income for me. So I'm, I'm doing all my research collecting all the data on analytics and building a fan base and how often to, to post videos. As far as I can tell, posting videos like once a week or um, any set schedule, you know, even if, it, even if you can't get to it weekly, will generate income. So I would suggest that for anyone. And it's, it's kind of strange. It's almost like the way I felt about getting into the clothing business. There are a lot of designers out there. There's a lot of people selling T-shirts and things like that. You know, and I, and I make T-shirts too. But there are always more customers than suppliers. So it's just a matter of finding your audience. And the same is true for YouTube. YouTube is so big that you can find your people your tribe, your circle, people that talk like you, communicate like you, that think like you, and they could be on the other side of the planet. And I follow a lot of them right now. Shout out to Wood of I love his channel. So YouTube will be my next form of income. I'm very focused on that right now because I have the other three or four already up and running. <laughs> so YouTube is number four. Number five, I recently found out that uh, I should be selling on Amazon. <laughs> I know you're like, ding, 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 ding. You didn't know that? I really didn't. Because my clothes are handmade and they're one of a kind, I thought that um, Amazon would be a little bit of a stretch because... You have to be able to mass produce a product, you know? So I don't mass produce. I never thought about being on Amazon. But this year here in quarantine, my eyes have been open that there was a way if I, even if I just produce a set number or something and send it into Amazon and post it on the site, is if there's a way to generate and build. But let's say you're not a maker are you are a maker and you can mass produce because there's certain certain things you can like if you make soap if you make soap you can make a batch of soap you know is there different things that you can make in batches if you can take those and get them over to amazon and set up your amazon merchant account you will make a lot of money so people are buying on amazon that's where they're buying from that's where they want to get it and i think it's a great idea so that that's my next thing. I'm not not quite there yet. I still have to learn the research is that they handle distribution, which 
trust me, I don't mind. <laughs> Those trips to the post office get, they get in the way. They really get in the way. You, know, you have to get your product to your customer. So you got to go to the post office, but it's a uh, time consuming. So if they're going to handle packaging and shipping and get everything where it needs to go, uh, Amazon, yeah, yeah, you're about to have a new partner. And I love that they use the word partner. So you'll be an Amazon partner. Uh, work with nonprofits in the event space. And uh, that actually started first. So before I started making clothes, I would host events. And at those events, I would wear African garments. And people would always ask, where did you get this? How did you get that? Oh my God, I look so good on you. You know, because I'm a curvy girl. So when you have clothes that are made to your size, and fit nicely and they're bright and beautiful and popping, you know, people recognize that. So now, not only am I a mom and a seamstress, but, and, and I work in the financial industry. This is my small little office space that I do all my sewing in, but I'll add a clip so you can see the outside space is actually for small gatherings or whatever. So that will be another um, revenue, another stream of income, which is what this video is about. So if you are familiar with the event space, whenever you decide to have a party, whenever you decide to have a meeting, whenever you decide to have any type of get together outside of your home, you usually have to find a space for that. And when you do go look for that space, there's a fee attached to it. And so I have a space just big enough for small gatherings, maybe up to like 40 people here, that when we get out of quarantine, I'll be able to use. But for now, we are in quarantine, and that's just the way it is. I can't run it out. But it is on my list, and I already have it here. So it's on. it is a stream of income for me after quarantine. <laughs> so, um, I, I think it's worth looking into. If you're interested in um, adding another stream of income to what you do, there's a whole world of events. Events are not just the location, the venue, but it's everything. You could be, you could buy in a bunch of chairs, and we do, I need chairs right now, you know. <laughs> This so renting chairs for like six or seven dollars a piece every time somebody has a gathering, you just drop off the chairs and make fifty dollars here and there, make a hundred dollars here and there. All you're doing is renting the chairs, you know. But uh, outside of that, catering can you cook? Do you know how to make desserts? Desserts are so lucrative. People will pay for the cake. They'll pay for chocolate covered pretzels and beautiful arrangements. Speaking of arrangements, arranging desserts and flowers. So events is just as fast business. I have a friend who does balloons, balloon decorations. Would you think, oh, balloons off the top of your head? Balloons? Yes, girl, balloons. Balloons can be arcs, they can be doorways, they can be towers, they can be centerpieces. When I decorate for the nonprofits, I did a centerpiece with the little lanterns. I'll show it to you one day. But they had the little paper lanterns with pictures and a balloon on top because events is a big business. That's that's number six. <laughs> so um, number seven, which is the last seven streams of income is what they say you should have. Seven streams of income is what I'm aiming for. And I do already have quite a few of them. But the last one is a big one. And I am so excited to get into it that I did download the little app. I don't know if you've heard of it, but the seventh one is Stocks investments in real estate so investment all types of investments now real estate is my first love <laughs> so did we go through this list of the things that i do I, I, at this point we can just call me a serial entre entrepreneur but um before i got into finance 
I was in real estate. And actually, real estate was the segue that got me into finance. So I got my real estate license when I was like 23, which, of course, I'm only like 24 now. <laughs> but I got my real estate license when I was like 23 because I used to be a file clerk at KB Homes. And they, when you're a file clerk, you see the numbers. And they would like have me put up all the cells, close the files when they sold them open the files when somebody came in interested in the house. So as a file clerk for this huge um, home builder company, I got to see what they were making on these houses. And I didn't actually get to live in big houses at that time. So I was so fascinated that after I finished that assignment as a temporary job, I turned around and decided to go get my license. <laughs> so since that time to this time, I have been obsessed with houses. I, I'll drive by them. I'll go visit them. I look them up on the MLS. I look them up at the county website. I can tell you a lot about a house, a neighborhood, or a house just by the address. Just send me an address. I'd be like, Ooh, oh, that's nice. So even inside the financial sector, most of my employments have been around um, mortgages or housing. So what I want to do for my seventh stream of income, because I'll, I'll go on a tizzy, the seventh stream of income is uh, invest in real estate because real estate is where the money is made, the bulk of the money is made in this country. You can do a lot with a small business. You can do a lot with the online stores, but it will never beat real estate. Or the stock market. So I'm doing my homework. I'm boning up on some things. There's some people, if you're interested in these things, that you should follow online. Max Maxwell is one that I'm following. Um, Jay Morris is another one that I'm following. And they are big in the real estate side of things. Both of them are millionaires at this point. And then on the stock market side, I'm still learning all the people to follow there. There's one guy, I think it's called The Trap. The trap market, tra tra traps, traps, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, he breaks stock market stuff down to where you can understand. Like, I never knew what a dividend was. Now I know from this trap guy. So those are my seven streams of income that I will be working on in 2020. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And I look forward to talking to you again. Have a good one.